So if you're listening to these slides in order, then you know that we just talked about this upper level um, westerly wind called the geostrophic wind a little bit ago. And um, remember the geostrophic wind gets, gets uh, faster and faster as you approach the tropopause. But here's the deal that there is actually a ribbon of air. And isn't this neat? And you're going to see this kind of emphasized uh, later. But when I say a ribbon of air, this is kind of like the ribbon of air I mean that is located, uh, not so surprising maybe, between um, the cells. So we have a ribbon of air located between the feral and, and the... We have a ribbon of air located between the Hadley and the feral cell here. And that's a jet stream uh, called the subtropical jet. And then we have a second ribbon, uh, fast-moving ribbon of air located here between the feral and the polar cell called the polar jet, the polar jet stream. Um, so the thing that these uh, two jet streams have in common is, as I said, they are very, they're relatively fast-moving um, uh, and they're seasonally their, how fast they move is actually related to the time of year. Um, and there are, how do I say this, sometimes there are breaks in these jet streams. So another thing, and I think I probably have it on a slide coming up, but if you are uh, flying in a hot air balloon, oftentimes you're going to kind of try to find these this, this uh, fast moving air uh, between the cells and take advantage of it. Another thing, and I probably mention it later, but I'm going to kind of be emphasizing it more, is that can you kind of see that I called them Rossby waves before on the previous um, segment of lecture. Can you kind of see the, uh, the kinks, the kind of, uh, it's not straight a westerly wind, is it? And whether it's a straight westerly wind or whether it's kind of got a waviness to it, that varies throughout the year too. <laughs> a lot of variations. Or I shouldn't say necessarily varies throughout the year, but it will vary from time to time. So I'll kind of let you soak this in a little bit. Um, here, uh, some. Uh, this slide is focusing on the, the jet stream that is actually between the feral cell and the polar cell. Now I'm focusing on the northern hemisphere, but hopefully you can go ahead and imagine there is a polar jet stream in the southern hemisphere as well, between the feral and the polar cell. And we're looking at it kind of three dimensions, so you have to kind of picture this, um, this, uh, this ribbon of air kind of coming out at you. And um, it's pretty cool. Um, not so surprising then, since it is between the feral and the polar cell, it is associated or hovering over what we've called earlier the polar front. So, um, that's, uh, there you go. Here's another slide that I think is reasonably um, kind of self-explanatory. Um, focusing just on the polar jet stream, you can see uh, here is the polar jet stream in the summertime because we said basically, um, I guess I should say more like in July, <laughs> summertime in the northern hemisphere, right? Um, the intertropical convergence zone has migrated uh, towards the poles, and so not so surprising we see the polar jet stream moved up uh, towards the poles. Um, in January, um, all features of the circulatory cells, including um, the, uh, the feral and the Hadley cell, excuse me, the feral and the polar cell have moved towards the equator, so we can kind of see that this ribbon of air has moved south. Um, during January and you can see with regard to how fast the polar jet is let me go ahead and zoom in um, the polar jet is significantly faster in the winter time than it is in the summertime now another thing and I I don't know if I've already mentioned this or alluded to this but um, <clears throat> can you imagine that here in the winter time um, that this kind of um, meandering of um, of the jet stream actually can go ahead and bring down um, cold air um, from the north. Okay, this is actually what we call, I'll put a T here for trough and um, it brings cold air down, it's associated with lows and I'll put an H up here um, the for, um, sorry, let's see, trough uh, 
ridge, I'm sorry, I'll put an R here for ridge, and that's generally associated with high pressures, and that would bring kind of warm air here. So, so focusing now on that, oops, focusing now on that um, jet stream that is between the Hadley and the Ferrell cell, the subtropical jet stream, and so looking at it. Uh, kind of edge on that of course would be right here and that's a ribbon of air um, the subtropical jet stream as I understand it uh, for here in uh, the Midwest which is where I'm recording these videos obviously um, is less influential than the polar jet stream So we've talked about geostrophic winds in upper elevations within the troposphere. They get stronger, basically having um, a, a westerly trajectory. And then I already kind of hinted when I talked about geostrophic winds that they can kind of have this little bit of a, of a what we're going to call meandering to them. And this right here, when we talk about this is we can call this kind of a waveform. And we talk about one complete wave as going from what we call um, this, I'll go ahead and call this a ridge to a ridge or a peak to a peak. Okay, that is one complete wave cycle. And this sort of kind of waviness that kind of comes and goes uh, within those upper level, um, upper level uh, geostrophic winds are called Rossby waves. Okay, and so like the slide says, if you kind of take a bird's eye view and look at the earth, we can have three to six of these kind of waveforms um, encircling the Earth. And these waveforms kind of move along with the geostrophic winds, kind of they eke their way um, westerly um, as well. So, um, all right. And there are consequences to these, what we call Rossby waves. So if you printed out the PowerPoint slides and you're trying to find the word that I removed, I can't remember which word I removed, I'll give you a chance to go ahead and do that. And then I want to focus on these figures because um, I think they do a great job at trying to explain what I'm talking about here. Um, remember now, or keep in mind, that, that, uh, that those geostrophic winds don't have to have kind of these kinks in them. They don't have to have this waviness we call Rossby waves. But let's go ahead and take a look. This is a snapshot of this particular time, what's happening with regard to the polar jet stream. So let me go ahead and focus in on this figure. Start with this one. Okay, so the polar jet stream is uh, kind of hovering over the polar front, which is between two cells. So basically, and we remember that the cells can migrate um, they, they, they meander, the, the location of, of where the cells butt up against each other. But for now, it's looking like we have basically um, the feral cell right here, and I'll put a P for the polar cell right here. Um, that means that we have the polar front and we have the polar jet. It looks looking nice and strong right here. The polar jet is this uh, blue line right here. So that's that ribbon of fast moving air. And we do kind of see some kinkiness here. We see some Rossby waves. So if we try to kind of look at um, how many waves, Rossby waves we have at this time, we have, let's see, that would mark one Rossby wave from what we call trough to trough. That's one. I see kind of maybe another trough over there. That's the second Rossby wave. A trough here, that'd be the third Rossby wave. A trough here, that'd be the fourth. Um, fourth Rossby wave, and I might have lost track, but looks like maybe here to here we could call this a fifth a fifth Rossby wave from trough to trough. So um, my point then here is can you see, um, and this has to do act actually kind of a discussion on air masses as well, let me change colors from red to blue, it, do you see where um, uh, if you are uh, here, let's just say, oh, in Michigan, can you see where you are um, under the influence of nice, uh, uh, you're kind of got a ridge coming up here, and you have basically nice warm air coming up at you. Compare Michigan right there to, um, and I'm bad at my states, <laughs> sorry, but you, can you compare that to kind of a similar latitude? If you're right here, can you see where you're under the influence of cold, a cold air mass actually, and kind of colder temperatures coming out at you? 
So that's what kind of waviness in the upper atmosphere can do for you. It can move air masses, and actually that's kind of what creates our, creates our weather. Um, it's a player in our weather, isn't it? And so just to kind of uh, remind you, one of the things I mentioned before, let me pick what color, I guess I'll pick blue, that these Rossby waves under normal situation, this whole Rossby wave will kind of wiggle and kind of move along with the geostrophic winds to the west, or excuse me, to the east, from the west to the east. So keep that in mind, and let me go ahead and take a look then at this figure. So this figure actually goes along with the last figure, and you can see where that ribbon of air, let's see what color do I want, red, can you see where that fast moving ribbon of air actually is marked about here? And what you're looking at, I believe these are ISO heights associated with an isobaric map. But what I want you to focus on are these colors. Um, these colors are showing you the, the most intense color is showing you the fastest moving wind. And, you know, kind of the lighter pink, the less wind. And if it, there's no pink at all, eh, that wind's not anything so hot. So this is marking the jet stream, okay? And what I want to try to do for you right now, try I say, is I'm going to probably take a pause or a break, and when I come back, I will be showing you the the current jet stream. So hold that thought. So another very cool thing about Explain Everything is that I'm able to go ahead and bring in um, actually a, a live website if I want. But um, this is uh, the current... Uh, jet stream for today is almost the 4th of July, July 3rd, uh, 2013, and we have some just crazy weather, if you ask me. So, for instance, it is very hot right now out here. It's been hot the last few days, and the, the heat is coming our way, but it is nice and cool here. And it's a great example of what can happen if your jet stream has a big old kink in it, and we're going to talk more about kinks here in a minute. But... Um, let's see, let me see if I can erase that, because that's kind of in my way, just because I can. Okay, so I said that's kind of cool right there, kind of hot over there in the west right now. And let me show you our jet stream. Let's see, go back to, all right. Now, can you see this 80 right here and this 80 right here? And what this is showing you, basically, is that is the color here is the fast moving wind. Okay, I am, by the way, at Intellicast, um, uh, Intellicast.com. It's a great place to see what the weather's doing. And what you're see, looking at here, I should, should have chosen a different picture, but kind of that last, excuse me, a different color, I'll choose red. That red line that I'm drawing out here is showing you, I know that's kind of our ribbon of air. This is our polar, this is our jet stream. Um, our polar jet stream, fast moving ribbon of air. And can you see the consequence that has is it is bringing cold air down here. This is what we call, I'll put a, a T for trough. Um, and if I haven't already talked about that, I'm going to be talking about that soon. We have a trough here and we have, I'll put an R for ridge here. And so we have cold, that's why we have this cold chunk of air here cold chunk of air here and a warm chunk of air here. The other thing, I don't know, it's a subtle thing, maybe, maybe not, but we basically have kind of a high pressure here, and can you see, we've talked about, or we'll talk about how around a high pressure, I think we've already talked about this, um, air in the northern hemisphere tends to go clockwise, and around a low, uh, a central low pressure, air will go counterclockwise. And so that's, I mean, that's all in the mix, and this is up at upper elevations is kind of what we're talking about. So we don't have our geostrophic winds going straight from the west um, to the east, a westerly wind. We have a nice, nice little Rossby wave here, and it has consequences. So I feel like in this segment, uh, this little video segment, lecture segment, I've been talking about these things. Zonal flow would be basically you don't see any kinks or Rossby waves in your geostrophic winds, okay, zonal flow. And it happens. And you can imagine with zonal flow in the northern hemisphere, our cool air stays up here and our warm air stays down there, okay. It's great for what we call actually kind of a stationary front. And um, in the chapter on mid-latitude um, cyclones, 
that's kind of an important sort of zonal flow to kind of get that started, a stationary front. Meridonial flow would be basically um, notice that it has our westerly winds, our upper level westerly winds, have a bit of north and south southerly flow to them. Can you kind of see how that, that works if you have a Rossby wave in place? This right here, Rossby waves are associated with what we call meridonial flow. Okay, so they kind of wiggle. So, and down here, it's this meridonial flow, and actually right now we are, um, we have a meridonial uh, flow in place. That's why these guys are so hot, and we are nice and cool. <laughs> okay, um, in the northern hemisphere, our... Um, our troughs, and I guess in the southern hemisphere too, but it's hard for me to think southern hemisphere sometimes. Our, our ridges are associated with, um, we have um, a relatively high central pressure and we have hot temperatures. And our troughs are cooler temperatures and um, uh, kind of a low, temp, low central pressure. So um, my point here is if we have this Rossby waves, this meridonial flow, you're going to go ahead and see uh, cold air move down in the northern hemisphere and warm air move up in the northern hemisphere. So here in so many words is to kind of emphasize again if you do have that kind of that waviness that meridonial flow um, then you can have um, um, our ridges are associated with relatively high pressures and our troughs are associated with relatively low pressures and um, there are, I could put a high here, a low here, and remember that these all kind of, they're supposed to now, sometimes um, they're, they stay too long. <laughs> they linger, these Rossby waves linger. And if they linger, then if you're under the influence of, of, a, of, of, a, of a ridge, or gives you kind of a high pressure, gives you warm temperatures, um, if it stays too long, doesn't move on like it's supposed to, you're going to have issues with that. Okay, but but hopefully it kind of moves along, and you're then you get a low a low soon. Okay, so um, uh, of course we call these high pressures um, anticyclones. We call these low pressures cyclones. So hopefully you'll kind of have this alternating um, uh, anticyclone, cyclone, anticyclone, cyclone, and uh, coming at you. Um, Okay, the next slide I'm going to actually show you where you can have a chunk of air kind of be pinched off because of these Rossby waves get too crazy. They kind of pinch off a chunk of air, and that chunk of air then can kind of be sent along its way um, uh, towards the equator, actually, is the most notable one, and it can give you um, kind of a, a, a little, well, I'll just show you. <laughs> So I hope you'll bear with me, but I only recently figured out how to <laughs> get all these colors in explain everything. It's the little things, right? So what you're looking at here, uh, the blue line, of course, is the jet stream we've been talking about, uh, the intersection between the ferrule and the Hadley cell, that ribbon of um, fast-moving air that can have consequences if it has kinks in it. And we've been talking about Rossby waves, and um, Rossby waves, we say that there's a fair bit of meandering, um, in the geostrophic winds, um, if there are no Rossby waves, we call that zonal flow. Okay, um, so actually, I would kind of call this zonal flow up here. There's not, there's not. If we have Rossby waves, they are kind of gentle. Um, and I mentioned that actually, they really kind of set themselves up for um, when we talk about air masses, a cold air mass and a warm air mass cold and warm, that can be kind of like a stationary front kind of between them. So not much going on here. Let me go ahead and let's uh, move to the next figure, which uh, looks looks familiar if you're kind of listening to these in order. This to me looks like uh, what we talked to, looked at on the previous slide, where definitely you have um, a lot of meandering, a fair bit of uh, kind of your Rossby waves are encircling the earth. Again, the blue line is your fast moving, your ribbon of fast moving air, it's your polar jet. And so it has consequences. If we kind of focus here on North America, um, 
this uh, trough right here is a relatively low pressure and these folks are going to be kind of cool. Um, this, I'll put an R here for ridge, these folks are going to be relatively warm because kind of a high uh, pressure associated with ridges. So let's go ahead then and let's just say that that, um, that kink there, that Rossby wave, kind of gets even crazier. And if you're if you compare that previous situation to this situation, again, you can kind of see that trough and your ridges, okay, but can you see where actually we have kind of a, a place up here where it looks it's looking like it can pinch itself off. And it does on the next uh, figure kind of pinch itself off. And can you see where then this chunk of air, which was pretty darn cold because it started out as uh, part of the polar um, the polar cell, it can go ahead and on the next slide you're going to see that it can kind of send it, go on in its merry way, kind of break off. And it's a rogue chunk of air and it, it has influences for where it goes over. It's going to feel very cold. So let me go ahead and show you then. Um, this would be kind of finishing off that thought where that chunk of air that we saw was kind of pinched off because of the crazy waviness to that, that particular Rossby wave is actually kind of sent on its way and these folks who aren't used to that cold air are going to get that cold air which they may or may not like and actually then can you see up here what happened to that Rossby wave uh, that Rossby wave is kind of done its thing and it's no longer there we kind of more back to a zonal flow so you know weather is complicated let me go ahead and kind of show you those all four at the, at the same time all those figures I mean weather is complicated it's cool it's dynamic and um, these are kind of things that are happening aloft that have um, specific consequences to us here um, down on the earth's surface